So we're getting into the holiday spirit here at Live Snap Love because today I'm going to teach you how to photograph Christmas lights. So I'm going to show you three different ways that you can photograph Christmas lights. And this is kind of for in your home, which means you don't even have to leave the warmth of your house to go outside if you don't want to. But if you do, you can use these exact same tips and steps to photograph lights outside too. So my name is Audrey Ann and I'm the founder of Live Snap Love where we teach you the ins and outs of your camera and editing so you can beautifully capture your children, your family and the world around you. If you're new here, be sure to hit that big old red subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll get notified every time we post a new video which is every single week. But right now, let's dive into the three different ways you can photograph Christmas lights and be sure to stay until the end of the video because I'm going to be giving you some general tips for photographing Christmas lights with your camera settings and so on. So do stick around till the end of the video. So the first way to do this is to make any points of light into a star. So you can see that in these two examples here, any points of light that you have, for example, the lights on your Christmas tree, they are going to turn into star bursts of light. Now there's two ways to get this. One is by using a filter and the other is by using your camera settings. So let's start with how to do this using your camera settings. So the trick here is to use a small aperture. Now that's a large F number. So you want to be using something along the lines of F22. So you could go to F18, F16, you can go to F26 or F32, but around about F22 where you have that really small aperture, that's going to give you that bursts of light wherever you have points of light. So for all the lights on your Christmas tree, they're going to turn into that little star lights if you have your aperture set to around f22. Now obviously you need to take control of your camera to do this. If you can shoot in manual mode, I'll do ideal go and shoot in manual mode that will really help you with all your other settings as well. If you can't then you'll need to switch to aperture priority mode where you can choose your own aperture number. Now I do have an aperture priority mode cheat sheet. You can find a link to it underneath this video. So go there, grab that, come back here and then watch the rest of the video. So you definitely want to be shooting in either manual mode or aperture priority mode so you can choose your own aperture number. So the second way of doing this is to actually use something called a star filter. Now it's just a filter kind of like this one, just sits on top of your lens, just threads into it. And they have this kind of little cut marks into it. There's like little cross marks. And what that does is that's going to create those star bursts for you, regardless of which aperture you use. So you can actually then, instead of having to use something like F22 or F16, you can use something like F4.5 or F5.6, and you'll still get those star bursts of light because the filter is creating them rather than the aperture. So if you struggle with getting enough light into your camera by using an aperture of say F22, then you can buy one of these star filters. Now I have one um, and I bought the cheapest one possible and I have to say the cheaper crappier ones are, they make your images kind of soft. So uh, you know, if you've got a really sharp L lens and then you put a $4 a uh, crappy filter on top of it, it kind of makes your images much softer. Uh, so what I recommend is just get one that's a little bit more expensive. They're still not expensive at all. You can pick them up for under $15 and that will help you create those points of light. So I've actually linked to a star filter underneath this video. So if you just go to the description underneath this video, you'll find a link to a star filter that's going to help you create that star burst of light. So let's move on now to the second way that you can photograph Christmas lights and that's by making them out of focus. Now this is a really creative way of photographing Christmas lights that not that many people do. So we'll give you something that little bit different. And it's really simple to do because all you need to do for this is to set your lens from 
autofocus to manual focus. So on the side of your lens, you'll see a little switch that says AF and MF. And all you're going to do is switch it from AF to MF. And that's going to stop your camera from focusing. And you are going to make sure then that it's out of focus. So you're just going to set the shot up as normal. But instead of focusing, you're going to use this focusing ring on your lens and you're going to move that out of focus. Now you can determine how much uh, you want that to be out of focus. You can just move that ring around until you get that perfect amount of blurriness in your Christmas lights. So let's move on now to our third and final way, which is to create light bokeh. And that's when the points of light turn into that small circles of light like you can see in these examples. Now you can do this with any subject in front of these circles of light. So you can use this as we've done here with the jars of cookies. You can do that with people. You can do that with an ornament, a teddy bear, absolutely anything. You're simply going to focus on the subject and that is going to throw the background out of focus. And if you have light points there, they are going to turn into these pretty circles of light. So to do this, all you need to do is place your subject in front of something that has lots of light. So for example, your Christmas tree, but it also could be like a wall of fairy lights, for example. Anything that has lots of these little points of light, the more little lights you have, the more of these circles of bokeh you're going to get in the background. Now again, you want to be shooting in either manual mode or aperture priority mode for this because you want to be able to choose a large aperture. That's a small F number and that's going to give you this light bokeh. Now again, do remember that we have the Aperture Priority Mode cheat sheet that you can download. There's a link to it in the description underneath this video. So if you're not yet confident cheating in Aperture Priority Mode, do make sure that you grab that. Now, you do want to use, as I said, this larger aperture. So I would be using something along the lines of around f2.2, f2.8. Uh, it really depends on the other factors that affect your depth of field and what you're photographing. But around that amount is going to give you that light bokeh. Now, we do actually have another video on how to blur out the background. You're going to use that exact same step. So only difference here is that we're going to have these lights in the background. So do watch that video. I will link to it underneath in the description again and at the end of this video. So do make sure that you watch that. Now, the other thing you can do with this light bokeh is turn the bokeh into different shapes. So you can choose to turn the bokeh from circles into something like heart shapes or star shapes, or you could even do festive tree shapes, pretty much anything your little heart desires. And you can do this just by creating a DIY filter that slips on top of your lens. Come back next week because I'm actually going to show you how you make one and you really hardly need anything, just some black paper, scissors and some tape and you'll be able to create this DIY filter and create shaped bokeh. So that's our three ways to photograph Christmas lights. Leave a comment below this video letting me know which one of these you are going to try. I'd really love to hear from you and let me know which one you're going to put into practice. So I also promised you some general tips on your settings for photographing Christmas lights. So here we go. So the first tip is to use as low an ISO number as possible. So this is going to help keep your noise and grain to a uh, minimum, just so we can get sharper, clearer photos. Now, if you're not sure about grain or noise or how to kind of keep that down to a minimum, we do have a video on that. Also, again, I'll link to that below in the description. The second tip is to use a tripod, especially if you are using shutter speeds that are under 
one over 60. So for example, when you're shooting, maybe using that aperture of f22 to get that starlight, the chances are you're gonna to have to really slow down your shutter speed to let enough light into the sensor to take the image. In which case, use a tripod, you're gonna find that your images turn out so much sharper. Tip number three is to not use your on-camera flash. That is going to ruin any mood or ambience you can get with your Christmas lights. So do whatever you have to do to not use your on-camera flash. So in exactly the same way as photographing anything, do make sure that you have plenty of light when you do this so that you don't have to resort to on-camera flash. Which leads me on to my next tip, which is to experiment between daylight and nighttime shots. So the easiest way to capture Christmas lights is actually during the day because you have more light available. So all the images that you've seen here were taken during the day. And that's because it's just easier to get the settings that you want. But also experiment with taking photos at night. It gives it a different look and feel, but do be aware that you're gonna struggle a little bit more to get the settings that you want, so a tripod usually is an absolute must. So we have more videos on photographing Christmas coming up, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll get notified when those go live. But for now, don't forget to watch that video, how to get a blurred background. If you're going to be photographing that light bokeh that we spoke about, that's gonna help you with that step by step. And you can also download that Aperture Priority Mode cheat sheet. You'll find a link to it in the description below this video, along with links to other other videos that I like and for the things mentioned in this video like the star filter. But that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next week when we're back with another Christmas themed video. See you then.